And that's everything you want. That 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 was exactly what you wanted from this team. Um, you know, we were talking about a few weeks ago, or a week ago, even, how the Yankees have been so fantastic. And they've been outstanding all year, but they haven't been tested by a team that's at least good yet. And so all the hype was was there, but there was still that last bit where folks were talking about, let's see them play the race, let's see them win at the Trop, and then the Angels are hot, they're playing better ball this year, they have them right after that. And so what did the Yankees do? They went out and take... They went out and took five out of seven against both the Rays and Angels. So you gotta be you gotta be content with that. You cannot be upset at that. That was a hell of a series against the Angels here to be able to sweep them and the final two coming in a doubleheader, which I'm sure it wasn't easy to sweep. It's never easy to sweep a double, but the fact that you know the rain out, um, the the sorry the rain delay. In the first game of the doubleheader, not knowing if you're going to get that game in at all, not knowing if that second game was even going to be able to be played. Like, it was just a clusterfuck um, for a while. And the Yankees just, eh, we'll figure it out. And they did. So, amazing. Just, just unbelievable. And uh, the, the magical season keeps keeps on going so far. So, let's talk about it. Episode 376 of BD4. Let's get into it. This is R.J. Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. This one by Mattingly. Oh, hang on to the rope. Goodbye. The Rose. He shook up the world again. Anthony for three. Bang. That one goes down. And the game is tied. See ya. A monster home run. Back-to-back home runs by the baby monster. Penetrates. Creates. And shows some dexterity as well with the left hand. Oh, What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to another episode of BD4. Welcome to the podcast. Welcome to BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA now to Yankees every series, Knicks every game, MMA on weekends. Wow. Yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun series. Um, good times, <laughs> and we're going to talk about it. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. You can listen to the show on many other platforms, um, Apple Podcasts, where if you do listen to us on there, be sure to give us a five-star rating and review. We are currently a five-star podcast and would like to keep it that way. We are also on Spotify to listen to. Um, You can listen to us on SoundCloud, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and many other listening platforms. You can also watch the video format of this podcast on Spotify and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the BD4 channel on YouTube um, and download all these episodes. You know know the the usual. Um, That is if you're new here. Thank you for becoming a subscriber um and thank you for tuning in if you're a regular thanks for coming back um and i'm also on social media for those of you who are new here if you want to follow me on facebook that is rj carbone r.j.carbone and you can also find me on instagram at rob j carbone and lastly i write a blog so if you go to ultimate sports networks.com and you put into the search bar either my name or the title of my blog, The Bomber Bocker Blog, you will find my blog where I write content about the Yankees and the Knicks. Um, 
And when you subscribe to the Bomber Bocker blog on ultimatesportsnetworks.com, be sure to do so using code 6A2841ERJC. This way you get a discount off uh, 10% off everything. It's late. Um, I have work tomorrow, so I'm going to try to make this one quicker than usual. Although every time we say that, we end up going the usual 45 minutes to an hour. Um, But we'll see. Um, It is Friday, June 3rd, as you are listening to this. And it's technically Friday, June 3rd, as I'm recording, as it's now past midnight. Um, So let's get this one in. But yeah, the Yankees had a great series at home to sweep the Angels. And um, we're going to talk about it. Let's head to break and then get right into the show. Stay with us. Hey, guys. So I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way we can help the channel grow and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. All right, let's get back to it. So if you guys want to follow me on social media, be sure to do so right now. I'm on Facebook at RJ Carbone, and I'm also on Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Once again, if you want to find me on Facebook, that is RJ Carbone, Instagram at Rob J Carbone. All right, welcome back to the show, episode 376 of BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. All right, um, first of all, today's Lou, it was Lou Gehrig Day. Um, second annual day for Lou Gehrig and all those who suffer ALS. Um, but yeah, the Yankees Orioles series was good, man. It was a hell of a job by the Yankees. It's a shame, man. It really is that. The Angels, every single season, seem to be mediocre to bad. Despite having arguably the two best players in baseball on their roster. That sucks. Like, I'm no expert, but like that that can't be good for the game of baseball. Right? I mean, shit. But, I guess that final game, because it was on MLB Network as well, was a, you know... Good for the good for the sport, hell of a game, you know. But man, it's gotta suck. You've Mike Trout, you've got Shohei Otani, international superstar, and you're just like so so. Like this is your this is their best year in forever, in like maybe six years, their first time being above five hundred, and they're barely above five hundred. But they're a good team. I mean, they're just not better than good. Um, and, and speaking of like good, like like I was saying at the top of the show, the Yankees were catching not flack, but like you know everyone was kind of holding holding back a little bit because they hadn't faced a top team yet. And the Rays are a very good team, and you know again the Angels are not great, but they're good this year. And I saw this stat on Instagram last night. It was a snapshot of one of John Boy's posts on Twitter. um, Saying like how the Yankees have been getting shit from other fans. About like they're only this good because they play the Orioles this many times. And he went back and did the math on their game logs. and, And like their record versus teams not versus the Orioles was technically worse. It's like 0.1% worse than, than their record against the Orioles. So that was debunked really quick. I mean, everything you look around, their record against teams above 500 is good. 
They can win on on the road. They can win at home. Like they're having a. You don't get to twenty one games above five hundred on June second by accident. They're they're a great team so far this season. They're having a great season so far, and you have to give them credit. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's I I don't have too many complaints in this episode other than you know a few things who we can all I'm sure agree on. Um, Robinson Cano was released earlier, uh, I think it was this weekend, maybe yesterday, by the Padres. He had three hits. He was batting like 094. So that happened. Um, yeah, man. I, I think we'll get into it now. The NBA Finals was tonight. I didn't, obviously, I was watching the game, so I didn't catch much of the game at all. But it sucks that Breen is still out with Corona. Uh, and then Van Gundy has it now. Everybody called that during Game 7 when he sounded like shit. Um, and I heard the Warriors, they were up big, and then they blew it late. Um, that's not good. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> um, I really want to get to the third game of the set, but obviously we'll start in chronological order. Talk about Tuesday's 9-1 to victory over the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Which was just as fun. I mean, this was probably the most exciting, well-rounded win of the season. 9-1, to one, the Yankees won on Tuesday. It was Montgomery versus Noah Syndergaard, former Mets uh, foe or pitcher, foe of Yankees fans. Top of the first, uh, the highlight reel began uh, with, with two great plays, and there are a few more to come later. On the first pitch of the game, um, Ward hits one. In foul territory, and Gallo comes all the way out from right field to make a nice play on it. The next at bat to Shohei Otani, he's taken a Montgomery fastball, takes a Montgomery fastball super deep to center field, but Judge times it perfectly, makes the leap, and he grabs it so nonchalantly that it almost looked routine and unimpressive, but he did rob the home run. It was a very nice play by Judge. Um, and then for the third out versus Trout, Monty gets him whiffing on that hooking curveball, which sort of indicated to me how his night was going to go. And we'll go over his final line in a second. Bottom of the first, the Yanks beat up on Syndergaard and his meatball fastball. That now sits at 93-94. Um, right out the gate, they score. Rizzo gets the RBI double. One nothing. Glaber Torres, the RBI double. Almost a triple, but he got caught coming off the bag at third base. Um, he thought it was going to be a home run immediately because he hit it right up against that see-through glass ball. Um, later, so later he picked it up as he rounded second, and I guess he kind of overran third base and popped up off the bag. That's there's no excuse. You gotta run the entire way, and of course it was Cone uh, talking about. Oh, you know what? The bases are too small. Let's make the bases larger. So that was said. <laughs> two nothing Yankees after the Glaber double. Carpenter then takes the plate. He takes a two strike slider deep to the short porch for a two run home run, and just like that. It's 4 nothing Yankees. Um, bottom of the second, the Yankees get their fifth run off Cindergaard when DJ LeMayhew pulls an RBI double to left field. 5 nothing. Cindergaard only ends up going two and a third innings, lets up seven hits, five runs score, no strikeouts, not many swings and misses either. I mean, his stuff was just flat. Um, bottom of the sixth, the Yankees still score, and two more come in off Rosenberg. Um, Trevino, who had a huge night, big series, comes home on a fielder's choice, dives the tag, which just completely dives the tag by the catcher, and ends up scoring. It was a phenomenal highlight. If you want to go back and look, definitely look that up on YouTube or something. It, it was it was awesome. 6 nothing Yankees. Then Judge gets the sack fly for 7 nothing. Bottom of the 8th, the Yankees tack on with two more just for good measure versus Rosenberg. And uh, that's when Trevino caps off his night with a third hit. It's a two-run home run to left field, 9-1. to one. 
Rosenberg goes five innings, five hits, four runs. Um, the bats overall against um, Angels pitching, the Yankees scored nine runs on 13 hits, six extra base hits, three walks, five strikeouts, one sack fly, a double play hit into, two for eight with runners in scoring position, and three or five men left on base. Trevino was three for four, one home run, two singles, two RBIs. He had that that snap throw pickoff at first base, makes a really quick snap throw, gets the runner. Uh, again, he dodges that play at home plate, and he also just continued to do an excellent job behind the dish as usual, calling the game well. Uh, Gallo was two for three with a walk, a double, a single. It was a solid night on both sides of the dish for dish for a change. He had the play in the first inning. He also made a nice throw in this one to prevent a runner from advancing. Um, and he was good on the bases, reaching home there on one of those uh, extra base hits earlier in the game. IKF goes one for four in the first game. Makes an excellent play in this game. Two at shortstop. Miggy, another hit. Also a stolen base. Continued to look comfortable in left field. Glaber gets two hits. Uh, Rizzo gets the double. DJ has two hits and a walk, and Judge, the only Yankee without a hit, but he did walk and sack fly. That was it for the bats. Uh, Montgomery ends up going seven innings, four hits, one run, one walk, four strikeouts, one home run allowed, and he gets his first victory of the season because he got some more run support second start in a row where Montgomery gets at least five runs um his ERA on the season is down to 3.04 but he's one and one now he finally got that first win out the way hopefully he gets more to come but yeah he was pounding the zone with that you guessed it cut fastball that Yankees pitchers are now utilizing um and his curveball also again looked sharp from the get-go it was his longest outing yet this season. I'm actually shocked that Boone didn't do the usual and pull him as soon as he let up uh, that first base runner in the top of the seventh. Um, he, he let him stay in there. Uh, but still, he only allowed him to throw 87 pitches. I just don't understand why Montgomery gets the leash all the time. Um, but he was great. Castro, one inning, two hits, no runs, a strikeout. Got into a bit of a jam there in the eighth inning, but worked his David Robertson act. Um, you know, he puts runners on the corners to start the frame with a double to Ligaris and a single to former Yankee Andrew Velasquez. Uh, Velasquez takes second for second and third, nobody out, but then he, then he strikes out Ward with a, with his slider and then induce, induces a couple of flyouts to judge from Otani and uh, Trout. McKay pitched the ninth, one inning, one hit, two walks, but also no runs. He gets out of a jam. Um, Yanks win. Like I said, it, it was one of the more exciting, well-rounded games of the season. You had great starting pitching, great defense, and great hitting. Did a great job containing Trout and Otani this game, as well as the next two. Um, but they were one for eight in this game together. Let's talk about game two. Let's just get right into it. The second game of this series took place earlier this afternoon. Nestor Cortez going up against Shohei Otani. An awesome matchup. Bottom of the first. Uh, the Yankees won this game, by the way, 6-1. to one. Bottom of the first. The Yankees on the board early again. Matt Carpenter, leadoff hitter Matt Carpenter, uh, takes Otani. Uh, it was an 11 pitch or 12 pitch at bat. And he eventually wins it, pulling a home run to left field again. Uh, all three of his hits are home runs as a Yankee. Uh, made it one nothing. Glaber Torres gets the opposite field solo bomb later in the inning. Number 10 on the season, surpassing last season's total. 2 nothing. Bottom of the third, another run off a solo bomb. Judge gets his 19th, 3 nothing. Bottom of the fourth, another run comes across. You have Hicks and Trevino leading off the inning with singles. Otani is then pulled for Quijada. Uh, Otani only goes three plus innings. Um, Marwin Gonzalez then rips the RBI double. It's 4 nothing Yankees. Bottom of the fifth, 
two more this time versus Diaz. DJ gets a home run to left field. Another solo shot. Four solo shots for New York. Miggy then gets the pinch hit sack fly. Uh, pinch hitting for uh, for Carpenter, making it six nothing Yankees. Top of the eighth, Nestor's out of the game, so of course the Angels can finally score. Schmidt comes in, does not pitch well, pitching like dumpster fluid. Two walks, two base hits in there. A run is allowed. It's six to one when he leaves the game with the bases loaded. Two outs for Peralta to face Walsh. Face Walsh. Um, it was a tough at bat. But he eventually gets the fly out to Hicks, who cuts in front of Judge uh, to make the play. And then the you know, that's when the rain delay happens after the bottom of the eighth. But eventually Peralta gets the uh, gets the job done in the ninth. Um, the bats six runs, thirteen hits, six extra base hits, two walks, six strikeouts, a sack fly, one grounded into double play. Um, Two for 11 in scoring position, eight left on base. Yeah, I mean, they were stranding villages all afternoon, um, all day today, but but still found a way to score six runs. You know, they kill Tani. They just always seem to kill him. They killed him last season in the Bronx, and they destroyed him. They clipped the shit out of him today. Three-plus innings, eight hits allowed, four runs, a walk, two strikeouts, three home runs, 75 pitches. Very impressive. They were all over his fastball, all over his slider. Um, and, you know, Marwin jumped on him and, and got a hold of his changeup later, too. But, yeah, he was missing his location. He was upstairs a lot. The splitter wasn't consistent. Um, just the Yankees were working his pitch count from the get-go, you know. Madden said, uh, uh, what's his name, Joe Madden, said that um, he thought he was tipping his pitches. So maybe that was something. I don't know. The Yankees just hit him well. Mr. 30-30 Aaron Hicks leads the way with the 3 for 4. Uh, some good base running also by he and Gallo in this game in the second inning on that Trevino fly ball to advance. Uh, Judge had two hits, a homer and a walk. Glaber, two more hits in this game, making it at the time three consecutive games with multi-hits, um, multi-hit efforts, and another home run for him too. And Glaber is one of our featured players of the series, going 4 for 12 this series in three games. A single, two doubles, a home run, two RBIs, two strikeouts, no walks, nine stolen, uh, nine total, excuse me, bases for Torres. Yeah, I mean, he, like I said, he tied and surpassed last season's home run total this series. So he had nine. Then he had 10. Actually, you know what? That might be a wrong stat fact. I think he got 9 in the last series against the Rays. But still, he surpassed the 9 with getting number 10 this series against the Angels. And he looks so much better, man. You know, he, he just looks the focus. We talk about the focus all the time. Bringing that right center field approach with Glaber Torres and... He just has it. He's just there. The OPS is now right under 800. The batting average is not too far under 260. I know he had the 0 for tonight. But that's where I think, you know, if he hits you 260 with 25 homers, I think that's great. I'll take that at this point from him, man. He looks really good. The power's there. He's pulling the shit out of home runs. He's going the other way with home runs. And he's playing good second base. You know, because he doesn't have to worry about the burden of shortstop being the captain of the infield. So, uh, Glaber definitely, definitely deserves to be the featured player of this series. And you know who else does? Getting another one. Who would have thought that Jose Trevino would be getting all these featured players, uh, featured player awards this season? Uh, yeah, Jose Trevino played in two of the three games this series. He goes five for eight. Four singles, a home run in there, two RBIs, does not strike out, does not walk, and eight total bases. His batting average is up to 275. His OPS on the year is up to 731. Both of those numbers are way above the expectation I had for him. I was asking this guy to go out there and bat 220, give you an OPS in the 600s with the, you know, the great catching that he'll bring. Well, he's hitting really well right now. I don't know how long that's going to last, but it's fun. 
You know, he had two hits after a three-hit game. I heard somebody compare him to Cameron Mabin. I like that a lot. Veteran comes in, shuts up and does his job, and he's a very humble dude, fan favorite. You know, uh, what else is there to say on this guy right now? Thank God for him, too. Thank God for Jose Trevino, because not only is Higashioka, not only does he suck more than a high-powered vacuum, but you've got, you know, that Ben Rortved kid who was supposed to be part of the team. I don't even know what the hell's going on with him. So, I mean, if it wasn't for Jose Trevino, where the hell would the Yankees be? Seriously. He's handling the pitching staff so well. And I don't think that's a coincidence that the Yankee pitchers, all five of them, are having these fantastic seasons. Um, I don't think it's... I, I do believe that Jose Trevino has a lot to do with that. He's hitting, he's catching, he's calling good games. He's been great. Um... Yeah. What else? Marwin had two hits even today. He's even hitting lately. DJ LeMayu homers tonight, or in the second game. He looks good since returning from that wrist injury. Looks a little better. Hopefully, yeah, he's gotten on base in each of these games. Hopefully, he could start becoming the guy we think. Um... Carpenter homering. Did the Yankees find something here, Matt Carpenter? Smooth left-handed swing. Built for that short porch. You know, I expect little to no production from him. So if they can get something out of him, just something, that's a major win. Uh, But who knows? You know, he might just get DFA'd when uh, both Stanton and Donaldson return this weekend. Um, But, uh, yeah, it's... It's good to see. Miggy, an RBI in this game. Keep the man in the lineup. We've talked about him plenty. The Yankees have been getting a lot of runs early lately. Uh, they weren't doing that for a bit this season, but they started doing it. I feel like, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I feel like, you know when they dropped 15 on the White Sox? I feel like since that series, they started scoring early very often. Um, so, yeah. Good good hitting in the first game of the doubleheader. Nestor, of course, seven innings pitched, five hits, no runs, two walks, seven strikeouts, 96 pitches thrown, and gets gets the win. I mean, what else is there to say? Nestor is 5-1 and one with a 1-5 ERA on the season. Um, there was a stat I saw earlier. <laughs> the second longest streak of starts... Giving up three earned runs or less in Yankees history. So, he's been pretty good for this team. And I mean, I gave this guy, literally last night in episode 375, we were doing our two-month progress reports. So that was before this game. And I gave Nestor an A+. And then he goes out there and does this after. <laughs> you can't go any higher. And everybody's talking about how, you know, he's definitely the guy to start the All-Star game. My question isn't even that. My question is, is he the guy to start game one of the division series? Do we, you know, continue to play well and get there? Like, shit. And he was, you know, he was, he wasn't exactly sharp today. He wasn't. I mean, he was working out of a bases loaded jam in the second inning. Rizzo makes a very nice play to help him get out of it. Again, working out of trouble in the third inning. He had almost 60 pitches after three, 71 pitches after four, but he found it. He found his way through. He had a four-pitch inning in there. I think it was the sixth inning. He has a four-pitch inning, and he caught Otani with a sick pickoff move today in the fifth inning. (laughs) Just, oh, he's been so good. He's just mowing down lineups. He's just destroying opposing lineups. He's been so good that apparently Jim Cat. I don't know if anybody heard what, what Jim Cott had to say uh, during the Twins broadcast. I guess they were talking about like Cy Young candidates this year. And he goes, uh, Nestor the Molester. There, there's a clip of it. You you can go look it up if you if you feel comfortable. <laughs> but he, 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 he said it. He said Nestor the Molester. I, I don't know. I have no clue. But um, that was said by Jim Cott. Like, that's a former Yankee broadcaster. 
um, and player. <laughs> let's let's talk about the final game of the series. The Yankees took it two to one. Didn't look like we were going to get this game in either, but you had it. The Yankees won 2-1. Tyone versus Detmers. Top of the first. Tyone, eight pitches needed. Six of them were strikes. He goes 1-2-3. Otani just misses a home run there. Top of the fourth. Tyone displays his nasty curveball to get Otani down on strikes. Top of the seventh. Otani almost breaks up the perfecto. But IKF makes what would have been the play with a stop up the middle. So at the time, once he finished seven innings, 21 up, 21 down. And I was, I had no clue until like the sixth inning. I was like, wait a second. Is he doing it? We've had a couple of those already. Nestor flirted with a no hit bid. But I don't think we've had anybody flirt with a perfect game this deep. It was awesome, and he looked so on. But I, I you know, I, I text everybody's texting me. I'm getting texts from everybody. I'm like, and I, and I text my brother. I'm like, put the effing Yankee game on. And he's like, why? I'm like, hurry. And he comes right down here, and we're watching it. I'm like, he's like, holy shit, my. And I text one of my buddies. I'm like put the Yankee game on. He's like, why? I'm like, put it on. He's like, holy shit. And everyone, everyone's just like shocked. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's not really that shocking because that's what these guys have been doing all season long. They've been going out there and mowing everybody, no matter what your name is, what your reputation is as a hitter down. Unfortunately, that perfect game bid ended in the top of the eighth right away. Angels break it up with a, uh, I think it was a leadoff base hit by Walsh. Bounces off of IKF's glove. Would have been a tough play had he made it. Um, Ends up being a hustle double. Yankees kind of throw it around the infield a bit. Um, But then Suzuki kind of unravels a little bit. Suzuki gets the RBI base hit with two strikes and two outs to Miggy in left field. Probably a play that could have been caught Risky, but probably could have been caught, you know, had it been there been a natural above average left fielder out there. But whatever, it's one nothing Angels and Yankees are now in dire straits. Just considering that their offense didn't look good, I shouldn't probably I probably shouldn't say that because they've been coming back from these games all season long. Bottom of the eighth, and and they show you right. They do what they've been doing all season long. And answering back right away after giving up runs. And I need to find a stat on that too. Because I'm pretty sure there's one. Um, Glaber comes up just short of a home run to Trout. But then Miggy Andujar. Guy needs to stay up here. Rips. A one out double the other way in the gap. IKF then comes up. He draws a big walk. Got on base three times in this one. Wild pitch by, uh, by Ortega during that IKF at-bat. Gets Miggy to third, by the way. Then IKF steals second base during Hicks's at-bat. Hicks ends up walk walking. He's not pinch hit for because he had Rizzo on the bench. But he bats and he walks because, uh, what's his name, could not find the zone. Um, and he loads him up for Joey Gallo, who also, I don't know why, wasn't pinch hit for. Gallo puts up a decent at-bat, full count. But ultimately, he whiffs on a fastball above the belt because that is the recipe that everybody knows now. With that swing, all you got to do is throw him a fastball above the belt. And he strikes out, and he's booed like crazy. Wasn't loud enough, in my opinion. I mean, this guy needs to be getting everybody in the stadium, adults, little children, to boo him. That was a spot you needed some kind of productive out. You needed contact, which is why I thought Rizzo should have definitely pinched it there. But the next at bat, Rizzo gets to pinch hit for Kyle Higashioka. And I mean, I would have flipped out if he let Higgy hit. Uh, and boy, did Rizzo deliver. And boy, did he need to deliver there. He, he needed that one for his own sake. Uh, he rips, rips an RBI single up the middle. 
he lets off a bunch of emotion. He's screaming like Severino. Um, two runs score in the play. The Yankees are up two to one. Everything's great. Top of the ninth comes. You figure Clay Holmes, Clay Holmes is coming in, gonna lock it down. My buddy, come, my buddy goes to me. He texts me. He says, "Clay Holmes is coming in. The game's over. We won." I'm like, "Yeah, but the ERA is a little too low at this point to where I think he's going to eventually give up a run because it's been so long since opening day. Knock on wood." And he gets two quick outs. But then Otani comes. And he walks Otani after a tough battle versus him. Trout comes and takes the plate. He drills Trout. He hits him with the pitch. The very next batter of Walsh, he hits Walsh on the leg. So the bases are loaded in a one-run game with two outs. All the Angels need to do is just get on base and they have a tie game. Then he goes 2-1. and one. Holmes goes 2-1 and one to the number 5 hitter. But then finally... After you know, multiple minor heart attacks later from me, I get to witness, we get to witness a Yankees victory. He induces a ground ball. I think it's to Glaber Torres at second base for the final out. Woo! Uh, and the Yankees win. But, I, you know, I, I kind of like the fact that he struggled. It, it, I like seeing him not just breeze through one for a change because it got to show you how he handles those spots. He's been dominating all season. You haven't seen him in a tough spot like that yet. So he got himself into one of those closer-type situations that he, he'll find himself into here and there if he remains the closer. And he handled it well. You know, and that sinker tonight, it's always been a hard pitch. He was throwing that sinker 100 miles an hour, consistent, heavy movement, which is probably why he was throwing a lot of balls. It wasn't locating great tonight. But he gets the save nonetheless, and he remains just impeccable this season. Um, the bats were 1 for 12 with runners in scoring position. Left a country on base. Bottom of the first, Judge strikes out on that low call. Velasquez takes Glaber's hit away. Bottom of the second, Miggy and Duhar walks, IKF singles, we get nothing. Same thing in the third, put two on, nothing happens. Bottom of the fifth, Marwin gets a base hit, stretches it into a double because Trout does his Aaron Hicks impression and falls asleep out there. But Marwin was stranded. Bottom of the seventh, Judge is rung up again on a low strike call. Starting to happen a little more this year. Um... You know, as Boone says, he's six fucking seven. <laughs> but they did enough in the end, and they come up clutch as they've been doing all season. Another come from behind victory. And the, these are the types of games that get people. I, you all know I don't like to use this word, especially on June second. But these are the types of games that get a lot of other Yankees fans using the word special. Just because it was one of those games where it was like, there's so many roller coasters. It was so up and down and it was so tight. And it was one of those games, just like, if they win this, wow, would that be impressive or what? And they did. It it was such an exciting baseball game. The atmosphere at Yankee Stadium tonight, I mean, I'm I'm watching from the couch, but it seemed like it was off the uh, charts. It seemed like it was close to playoff caliber just from watching on TV. I mean, it looked like it was pretty packed. It looked like it was very loud. Fans were going wild. Every pitch, you heard the ahs from the crowd. I mean, this was the day where everybody thought the rain was going to wash both of these games out. There was nobody even at the day game. (laughs) But the night game, wow. So, it was so electric. And hopefully that moment kind of jumpstarts Anthony Rizzo, who's been really bad ever since that April. Um, but you know who's been impeccable? And and we talk about Cy Young numbers with Nestor Cortez. Jamison Tyone ain't too far off. The start after going eight innings, two hits, he has another outing tonight. Eight innings, two hits. One run, no walks, five strikeouts. He I mean, Yeah, I mean, you talk about Cy Young numbers. If Nestor didn't exist, we'd probably be calling Jamo a, a candidate. He's six and one. He's got an ERA of two three through ten starts. He's been on overshadowed. I mean, in his last seven games, he's allowed just one home run. And this is a guy who issues a lot of fly ball outs. So that's impressive. 
He was in the in the zone all night, just multiple, you know, working with like as he usually does, works with multiple variations of his fastball. But he mixed in the breaking pitch, and he was just amazing, pounding the zone. And he was our featured starting pitcher of the series, Jamison Tyone. It's funny though, man, because like. Like, our pitching is so phenomenal. Like, I thought for sure Montgomery was going to get the featured starting pitcher of the series. Then I thought for sure Nestor was going to get it after seeing what he did earlier this afternoon. But nope. Tyone one-ups the one-upper, Nestor, who one-upped Montgomery. I mean, these guys are going out there. They're not just pitching great games in terms of runs allowed. They're going seven innings, eight innings, deep into games. I was joking with my brother earlier in the season because I'm like, yeah, the pitching has been phenomenal, but you remember the days when we had horses? Guys like CC would go eight innings, seven innings all the time? Well, they're doing that now. Boone's giving them a leash. Uh, I mean, a longer leash. Unless your name's Montgomery. And they're going out there and they're taking full advantage of it. It's unbelievable. You really sit back and think about how good this pitching staff has been. It's hard to fathom. And I've always clamored, I've always, I, I've talked about this plenty of times. I've always wanted a Yankees team where their identity was starting pitching. And now, it seems like so far, I know it's early, we have that. But we are a third of the way through. Let's get to that point where it's like, alright, I'm buying in a little more every day. These guys are good. These guys are great. These guys are phenomenal right now. I mean, Mike Trout... Shohei Otani come to town, and you hold them to a combined 2 for 22. That's disgustingly bad. And these are the two best hitters in baseball. And you clipped Otani in the middle game. The entire five-man rotation has just been Cy Young caliber, each and every one of them. The bullpen remains very good. Holmes has the ERA down to 0 in his worst outing of the season uh, outside opening day. He still finds a way through it. And so that's why you look at this team. And of course their, their lineup has, has produced. But the pitching. I mean, they, they, they are, they're the reason the Yankees are 36-15. and 36-15. and 15. 21 games above five hundred. On June 2nd. You play two decent teams in Tampa Bay, who's very good, and the Angels, who's good, and you go 5-2 and two in those seven games. And now you get a nice little breather, because you get a gimme series against Detroit coming up this weekend, which I think it's at home. Hopefully it's a gimme series. If the Yankees do what they're supposed to do, which... I mean, <laughs> At this point, it looks like they will. Donaldson's coming back, I think. I think Stanton's coming. I think like you're getting some positive news here. It looks good. It looks very promising right now. And again, I'm not one to use the word special, but I understand why other Yankees fans are starting to use that word. I'm not going to buy in there yet. I'm not going that far yet because I think this team in the playoffs is a completely different team in the regular season every year. But... This regular season has been vastly different from regular seasons in recent years of the past. I will say that. I'll give you that. It's been phenomenal so far. And all the bitching and complaining I do on social media in the middle of a game, that's just in the heat of the moment shit, man. I gotta give this team credit. They're playing amazing baseball. Do you know how hard it is, how difficult it is to be 21 games above 500, 50-something games in? If you're 21 games above 500 at the end of the season, that's a very good record. You have 90, what, 91 wins or something like that? The Yankees are 21 games above 500 so far, and it's June 2nd. Barring a disgusting collapse, it looks like this team's going to be a 100-win division winner again. Right? That was the expectation for a bit. After 2019, right? Where they won 103 games. Like, that was... But then we had a bit of a... Like, wow, this team's not as good as, as we thought they were. They're looking to be that team again. Hopefully. Hopefully. We've got a long way to go, guys. But it's been a fun ride so far. And I have to give credit. 
Let's go to break one last time. We'll wrap it up with a couple segments. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode. But first, I also want to let you know I have another blog. The blog I'm writing for is on ultimatesportsnetworks.com titled The Bomber Bocker Blog. If you want to go subscribe to this blog, you should do so using my promo code 6A2. 841-ERJC. Using that, you'd get a discount $7.99 a month to get the best Knicks and Yankees opinionated content around. Once again, guys, the Bomber Bocker blog on ultimatesportsnetworks.com using promo code 6A2841-ERJC, $7.99 a month. All right. So for this episode, episode 376, our NYY NYK MMA question of the day is In 2004, two different Yankees hit at least five triples. Who were they each? In 2004, two different Yankees hit at least five triples. Who were they each? Let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get it correct, I'll give you a shout out in the next show. If you don't get it correct, but at least attempt to guess the answer, I'll let you know what the answer is in the next show. So one last time, our NYYMYK MMA question of the day for episode 376. In 2004, two different Yankees hit at least five triples. Who were they? All right. So we're going to wrap it up with our third. Yes, our third Who Am I segment so far in the podcast. So for those of you who are new here, who am I? I will read you a player's tenure. Oh, I'm sorry. Play. I will, re- I will read you the number of different teams that one player played for in his career where he's at least played for the Yankees. I'm going to read you each year which teams he played for. And you're going to have to guess which player it is. So who am I? I started my career in 2008 with the New York Yankees, playing until 2014 with them. Then I went to the White Sox from 2015 to 2017, came back to the Yankees and played for them from 2017 to 2018, played for the Philadelphia Phillies in 2019, didn't play in 2020 during the COVID year, played for the Rays in 2021, and then I played for the Whites. Uh, I'm sorry, the Chicago Cubs in 2022. Who am I? All right, so I'm going to give you a minute now to guess who that is. And once the timer is up, I'll let you know what the answer is. Who am I? All right, and the answer to our third Who Am I segment on the podcast here is David Robertson. That's right, pitcher, relief pitcher David Robertson. 
with the Yankees from 08 to 14, the White Sox from 15 to 17, the Yankees from 17 to 18, the Phillies in 2019, the Rays in 2021, and the Cubs so far here in 2022. David Robertson. All right, guys. So, like I said, it's been a phenomenal ride so far. It was a great series for the Yankees. Many great things to talk about. The two holes still remain the two holes, and that is Gallo and Hicks. They're both still pathetic and disgusting. Hicks had a a few hits this series. Gallo had some moments as well. But both of them continue to show us why they are not reliable when it counts. Um, and, And at least one of them must be cut. But, I mean, if you're really talking, trying to win a World Series, I don't think you can go forward with either of them on the team. Gotta upgrade at that position. They're both disgusting, they're repulsive, and again, the boos that were thrown at Gallo tonight were not nearly enough. I, I'm done with both of these guys. They need to get out of New York and maybe find a different career. Mr. Thirty Thirty should be playing golf, and, and Joey Gallo should maybe go to some other team, some small town, small market, and, and just get the hell out of the city. But other than that, no, it's been fun. Like I said, the the starting pitching is the story. Guys, if you've not checked out our progress report, do that. Episode 375, we went over our two-month progress report before the doubleheader today. We did this last night on the, uh, the 1st of June. So check that out. But guys, thanks for stopping by. Episode 376, kind of had to rush through it. Um, didn't have much to really... Give you even you know no input really just kind of summarize the series and stuff, but it is late. I'm tired. This has to be one that is uh, more of the boring side of episodes maybe. But thank you for stopping by and thank you for sticking this long with us. And I'll, I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.